Hello and welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Back to you with another episode. This is really kind of a, a, my kind of opinion as to where The Boring Company is going to be going over the next uh, 10 to 12 years or so. I'm going to make some very, very bold projections. Yeah? These are projections. These are a bold part kind of numbers that I have come to over uh, the last sort of three or four years and it, I've decided that this is now the time to kind of release these uh, these figures as it were because the Boeing company is going in the right direction so proof Fox insane metrics so as you know uh, resorts world has started therefore we're starting to see uh, proof Rock, uh, get ready to go it's probably actually boring today as we speak so we're going to start to see uh, metrics as to how this kind of revolutionary tunnel blowing machine can um, can produce incredible numbers because this machine has been specifically built from the ground up to break records it is definitely here to change the game now I have some pretty bold predictions for proof rock however um, I have been a little bit sheltered in terms of how I wanted to release my kind of projections in the past because obviously you know things are constantly changing you know the, the, the uh, kind of approach that the boring company is making is, is constantly uh, evolving but I think we've got to the stage now where it's about time where I start to open up about what I think this machine can potentially achieve and how it's potentially going to revolutionize uh, how quickly and uh, cost effectively we can build out massive mass transit systems so if my analysis is correct and i've been thinking about this for over three years now uh so i i'm very confident in this kind of uh, uh analysis that i've done and then where i project things to the uh, heading um proof rock will decimate all state records for tunneling in nevada and that's going to be over the next 18 months yeah it's not going to be in 10 years time that's going to be over the next 18 months possibly less than that uh, and we're certainly going to see some records uh, this uh, year, uh, both in terms of meters bored per week and meters bored per day. The reason I give you two numbers there is because it's, it's all well and easy doing you know some great work over a day, but ultimately there's various other tasks that you need to uh, conduct when you're running your TBM. So you, you know you might have a good day followed by a bad day followed by a good day. So you, the ultimate kind of um, statistic you want to be looking at is the meters board per week or the meters board per month and then kind of look at that and say what can this machine actually achieve when it is running you know almost 24 7 really so i'm pretty confident that in the state of nevada we're going to see some records and then overall you know potentially world records as well in the very near future uh, future loop projects in 2023 and 24 will show excellent performance gains this is not uh, a stagnant technology this technology is going to constantly um, progress uh, and we, we're going to see obviously lots and lots of progress over the next sort of five six seven eight years um, ultimately like that leads to uh, efficiency gains the team will also convert efficiency gains into lower construction costs so the ultimate aim of the boring company is to achieve high speed uh, tunneling construction and also to reduce the overall costs of projects. Thus, you can build projects fast and do them cost effectively, which, we, which means that you can get rid of congestion quickly and cheaply, and therefore that's gonna attract a lot of uh, outside investment. It's gonna attract a lot of interest from various states and cities. Okay, so here is my kind of uh, table as to what I think can be achieved between now and 20. 32 as you can see i've started off around 31 31.5 31 uh, meters per day uh, towards the end of um, the las vegas convention center project that is what was achieved um, on the best kind of days and the best kind of weeks was in and around 30 meters uh, per day so in the ballpark of around 27 to, to, to 30 meters so i think we're kind of here now as you can see um towards the end of this graph is quite uh, uh linear 
whereas I expect uh, this to, to grow at much higher percentages early on before kind of flattening out. So what what do I think the Boeing company will, will be kind of doing each and every year? They'll obviously be refining the machine, they'll be recalibrating it, and they'll be uh, attempting to make changes to adapt to the, that particular proof rock machine to the geology in which they're working. So uh, around 2022, uh, you're looking around uh, 95, uh, 96 meters per day. So that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty damn good. That That's just under uh, a mile sort of every two uh, weeks. Uh, so it's about 0 0.8 miles or every two weeks. So then 2023, you're looking at around uh, 118 meters. Uh, and this kind of progresses up until about 2026 when we start to see a bit of a slowdown. Um, you know, it, it's difficult to kind of uh, tease out those improvements towards the end. Now, to achieve one mile per week, you, you need to be doing around 228.5, 229 meters per day. I, I think that's very, very difficult to achieve personally. Uh, and, I, and I think that the, the cost that you would incur attempting to get to that number would, would, would make it possibly uh, unviable. So towards the end of, of my kind of graph here, which I hope illustrates the kind of speeds we're, we're kind of expecting of, of, of proof rock, we're looking uh, around here, we're looking around 170 meters, then it's around 173, 174, 176 meters per day. And I, I don't really see much happening after that. I think that's going to really kind of flatten out um, in that uh, in that kind of uh, period there. So I think that is quite bullish. I think anything I think anything over a hundred meters really. So anything above this line is is kind of super impressive. Uh, being able to regularly achieve over a hundred meters consistently throughout a week or a particular month is going to be quite difficult for. The Boeing company, but I believe that uh, they've got the right approach to achieving that. And, and what pictures I've seen of proof rock so far at Results World indicates to me that they have made consi considerable uh, uh, changes to that machine in order to uh, get the speed up. So when Results World is um, completed, we're looking somewhere in this kind of ballpark now these are all ballpark figures it, it, it might be the case that they they do you know 45 meters this year and then uh next year they're, they're closer to 100 rather than 95 so it's just kind of there to kind of gauge it now i'm sure some of you disagree fundamentally with these numbers if you if you do tell me in the comments below why you think that i'm wrong um, and then i can explain to you why you, i'm correct okay so Obviously, the amount of uh, uh, meters you can do per day is a very, very important metric, and that opens up to massive expansion of mass transit systems on the ground in various US cities. However, what is also important is the cost per mile. You could argue that the cost per mile is 20 to 30% more important than the, the speed per day. Um, I kind of personally think both of them are maybe equally important, but maybe have a slightly uh, more favourable to the cost. Um, but as you can see, at this moment in time, we're somewhere in the region of, of, of six and a half to seven million uh, per uh, mile. That's per TBM board uh, mile. That's what we've essentially achieved at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Um, but obviously this is, is coming down. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating that over time, this will fall quite considerably. Um, so if you look at 2021, uh, we're down to about 5.7 million. Uh, and then 2022, we're, we're down to about 5.15. 5. So as you can see, ag again, uh, big percentage uh, drops in the cost over time as they're kind of teasing out these efficiencies it becomes more and more different difficult and then it, it, you know it kind of flattens out as it as it were um, if you can't see that because my face is in the way I'll, I'll just pull it up uh, up here so 
I think it's going to be very difficult to, to get the cost per mile of tunnel below $4 million. Um, however, I think at these kind of prices, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter too much if it's you know 4.4 million or 4.1 million. I don't think uh, at that kind of stage in, in the cost cycle it makes much um, much much difference. But I think based on what I've seen and having a think about where potentially you can make savings, I think over the next kind of uh, uh, sort of nine years or so, I think the absolute kind of um, Minimum you could get down to is around four, four point four, four point three five in that kind of ballpark. I actually anticipate as well as the Boeing company shifts more to a focus on increasing the speed of the TBM. Uh, potentially, what we could see is, is it doing this, so it could go up, but probably more like that rather. So you might see that some machines are focusing on speed rather than um, efficiency. But I anticipate that the cost will always remain below, uh, well below 5 million per mile, which is a pretty damn good number when you consider that some tunnels are way in excess of you know, 150, 180 million dollars per route mile. So you're looking at around you know, 70, 80 million per tunnel. So, uh, you know, this is, this is like 20, 20 times, almost 20 times less. Okay, so I think that again is quite ambitious, but I think that the Boeing company has the right kind of approach to achieve that. I think by focusing on one size of tunnel, that will enable them to, to, to get here a lot, uh, a, lot, a lot quicker. So where are these efficiency gains coming? I'm just gonna kind of go over this very, uh, very quickly. So. The main cost to tunneling is you have all this spoil coming out of the tunnel and you need to do something with that spoil. Ultimately, you're going to put it in a truck, which you know, you're paying someone to move it for you and then you're taking it somewhere and then you're paying you know, a landowner to, to hold that kind of in, in a spoil heap somewhere for you. So all that is very inefficient. So if, if you can um, convert that spoil into something like bricks, that, that that's absolutely brilliant. But kind of using it for more simple things like maybe uh, the fill in between uh, uh, found foundation uh, beams and, 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 and uh, pile caps and things like that. So that, that's one use for it. Obviously using it as a sub base and a base for, 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 for roads and, and, uh, and uh, actual flooring, like ground, ground based flooring, that sort of thing. So there's lots of things that that spoil can be repurposed to. You, know, you might need to, to, to clean it and, and kind of sort it, but can definitely be used for various things which obviously ultimately leads to uh, cost efficiencies uh, and maybe you have an agreement with a certain uh, landholder where you can essentially just dump it there um, in some kind of quarry or in some kind of uh, uh, low part of the particular land holding and it's useful for them useful for you and you can have a lot ongoing relationship in somewhere like Las Vegas therefore that that results in more uh, cost efficiency um, so I think over time, uh, here's concrete segments being produced here in these uh, uh, castings. So concrete segment production can be rapidly uh, improved in terms of efficiency and, and kind of uh, uh, economies of scale. And I think by having one facility in each city that you're operating and just constantly using that facility for maybe 10 to 15 years, you can drive up efficiencies. Most importantly is your suppliers. Uh, maybe you can use some of your spoil to go in your concrete segments, uh, that would be super useful, but possibly you're gonna be using suppliers, you're gonna be uh, negotiating with suppliers constantly, because you're sending a lot of work their way, you're gonna be able to say to them, hey, you know, can you cut me in on some of the savings? A good supplier will always do that, if not, you're gonna to go to another supplier. Uh, you need to be supplied with coarse and fine aggregate for your concrete segments, so ultimately I expect that you could drive the costs down, you know, two, three, four percent every year, maybe more, uh, and cut the, the cost of those uh, segments down, maybe make the segments thinner, so you're using less material. So there's lots and lots of uh, opportunities there for cutting down and making efficiencies. So TBM power efficiency, obviously as they calibrate the machine, they're gonna make it more power uh, uh, efficient. It's gonna use less electricity. Uh, current TBMs are burn absolute mountains of electricity. So if you can, you know, uh, adapt the TBM, which they will be doing to, to use less electricity, that's gonna make big savings. If you're reusing that TBM 
five, six, seven times. Again, that's going to be massively important. Reliability, if you can improve the reliability of your machine, learn from your mistakes, find out which parts are failing most, maybe using uh, different materials, and then you can get, you know, instead of getting four months out of this particular part, maybe you get eight months, maybe you get 10 months. That's going to obviously, again, equal more efficiency, less wasted time doing maintenance, that sort of thing. And then you're going to convert that into uh, uh, more meters per day. And structure methodology, obviously they're using pore poising now that, you know, we're not having these uh, uh, launch pits and reception shafts. That means you're not having to use as many secant piles. That's going to save a big mountain of money, enable faster launch of the machine. Uh, in terms of plant hire, I'd hope in the future that the Boeing company has its own equipment and it doesn't have to go out there and hire plant. Ultimately, hiring plant is a very, very uh, cost inefficient way of doing things and ultimately results in you taking on a lot of the costs. So if we can get rid of that, use our own equipment, possibly electric uh, excavators and cranes and things like that, then that's going to obviously equal more savings and that can be introduced over the next five to seven years. Uh, upgrade and fine tuning of proof to fit geology. As you do more and more jobs in a particular area like Las Vegas, like Austin, like Florida, like Miami, you know, you can continue to adapt that machine to, to fit that geology. You get a better understanding of the ground you're working in, of the strata. You can then turn that into more efficiency gains, uh, improve the speed as well, because you can adapt that machine to, to, to kind of combat those various uh, problems that you know that you're going to encounter. Uh, automation and team knowledge. Obviously, over time, your team gets more efficient as it, as it gains knowledge, as it becomes, you know, uh, more adapted to the environment. And ultimately, you will be cutting some members of your team and re replacing that with automation. That ultimately results, results in faster running, but also you're not paying a person. So that results in cost efficiencies as well. So all these things add up over time and then you end up with a cost per mile of around 4.4 million and also a speed of around 176 meters per day. These are all very bold predictions, by the way. I hope that I can come back to this video in the next three or four years and say, I told you so, but there's always that possibility that I might be absolutely way out. But you know what? This is life. You, you live and learn. If you would like to, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you would like to support me, consider going on Twitter, uh, Discord or Patreon. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you to all my Patreons. Many, many of you doing incredible things supporting this channel. A couple of new Patreons as well uh, this uh, this week. So we have Crunch, who's recently joined us, um, and a couple of other people as well. Uh, Robert as well. Thank you for supporting this channel and supporting the uh, Boeing Company. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Very important. I'm getting very, very close to 8,000 subscribers now. So please, you know, just boost it up a little bit more and we'll be get up to 8,000 very soon if you subscribe. Thank you for commenting. I do very much appreciate all the comments below. It helps me um, understand what you're thinking and if I can improve this uh, channel. Okay, so remember guys, don't be boring and I will see you on the next one. Thank you and good night. See you later. This is Sparta! <laughs>